Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3D Printer Vlog here on Power Playground. This is your host Michael. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. We're going to be doing a bit of a voiceover for the assembly process, at least the start of it. We're going to be assembling the uh, extruder heads, or sorry, the hot end uh, carriage. And uh, of course we'll be testing on the gantry here, but yeah, I just uh, went ahead and sped up the video here, clipped it. I uh, didn't really want to do like a direct recording because it was about two hours worth of video and yeah it was it was a real pain in the ass just syncing the cameras up with each other not to mention that uh they both like died halfway through the shoot so they, yeah a lot of weird inconsistencies but all the footage is synced up um it just yeah audio would have made it a complete pain but you know now we're getting into it so we're starting to just assemble the top part here i just thought it'd be a decent way to do it but uh other than that, I uh, do apologize for the crappy camera angles. We'll probably get something better next time when we uh, start another assembly video, which should be hopefully pretty soon here. Um, fingers crossed, I should be able to get enough free time to assemble my printer. But uh, yeah, the reason I haven't posted a video in a while is I have been busy uh, setting up an e-commerce website. It's 3dshapeengineering.com. Currently, you can order 3D prints custom printed for me here on my 3D printer and of course this one once it's assembled and I'm going to also be selling 3D printer parts as well as a bunch of other little doodads here that I printed out uh, so I'm going to link that in the description definitely recommend you check that out and I'll go ahead and put a little annotation here as well but um, other than that yeah here we go now I do want to uh, point out that this particular assembly process it is just base all I really had to go with are pictures and a very loose instruction guide. The only thing the instruction guide is like a five page PDF went through is uh, basically how the frame is supposed to be assembled and very vague at best uh, would be the way I'd describe it. Uh, so yeah, right now I'm just lining up the uh, hot ends. The fortunately I didn't really, that, that, that all came, everything's pretty much snapped together pretty well considering that those hot ends aren't even standard equipment. I had to make some slight modifications to the model, but overall wasn't really too bad it was a pretty easy build of uh for the most part but yeah it's um but yeah like i said it's it took me about two hours to do this particular part here over or at least this particular assembly and that's with all my screws organized if you notice i had little bins i actually uh took a few hours to get everything properly organized so i wasn't you know going around this video and like oh where, where's where's my m3 screws here yeah, it definitely helped out big time. Um, fortunately, there is a pretty comprehensive bill of materials that showed or told me like what I would need for the most part. It, it wasn't a hundred percent accurate, but it was accurate enough to where I wasn't just you know getting pulling out random screws and figuring out which was where I had some guidance at least. But yeah, it's uh, and not to mention that this particular carriage is for an, a different design than what the actual frame is built on. So. There's a little bit of trick, trickery going on there, but overall, not too bad. And uh, here's a good little tip. If you want to cut that, uh, the I think it's PTFE tubing. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, but uh, yeah, it's if you just, just get a razor blade and cut it, don't use scissors because you'll just crimp the ends. But And yeah, there we go, putting on the bolts and got to kind of shave out some of the plastic. There wasn't really a whole lot of post-processing really satisfied with how the prints turned out on this project here because in previous uh, attempts at making my making a 3d printer the prints were just of pretty poor quality not to mention i was printing off an ancient printer bot which was made of wood and always needed calibration and you needed basically babysit the thing in order for it to print correctly which yeah that's why i love that flash forwards anything with a metal or plastic ish frame really cool metals preferable but uh, yeah, it'll be a lot better in wood in terms of stability. So yeah, we're just attaching, um, oh, yeah, just little end stop holders there. I had to sand those down a little bit. They're slightly off measure. I can't remember. They're probably for the other design, which is probably why they don't fit slightly. But yeah, just a little, just a small little file. I got a uh, set of files from like a hobby store just for like models. They're like really tiny files. I mean, you can get a set from Harbor Freight, but probably not as good as quality but 
you know, like broke like one out of eight, which are pretty good quality. I think I paid like 10, 15 bucks for them. And uh, yeah, I just had to sand down the little holes for the uh, belt grips for the GT2 belts. All right, so I just cut off a little bit here. Didn't want to post too many of the filing just because it was going dragging on for a little bit too long. So right now what we're doing is we are assembling the uh, back end of the hot end carriage. Just a couple more belt tensioners on here as well as the uh, that's where the cooling fan will stay which yeah cooling fan will definitely be good for uh, overhang printings. Uh, I did print off an actual cooling fan attachment for my flash forge printer which I will be attaching here soon. I just have to get a little electrical connector and uh, wire up a wiring harness. I'll probably do a little video on that here, but uh, But that's pretty good. There we go. So I went ahead and attached everything together Or starting to get the uh, fan attached here And like I said, fortunately they have everything uh, at least the materials Shown out for where you need to attach or where you need to allocate everything. So that was pretty handy. So I just use my unnecessarily large wrench to tighten these tiny little M3 uh, bolts and nuts, which, yeah, it worked pretty good. And there we go, so getting that sucker tightened up there. I want to make sure that, I mean, pretty much with anything 3D print wise, if you're building a 3D printer, you want everything to be as tight as it can be. Uh, of course, just without it binding or preventing, you know, moving parts from moving, but yeah, you don't want anything to shake loose in the middle of a print because that's how you get a, just a large failed print, You're, especially if it's like a huge long like 24 plus hour print or something ridiculous like that. Alright, so we're just assembling the uh, fan, just getting it finished up here, belt tensioners, all that good jazz. And um, yeah, I just want to point out here <laughs> for a jillion time that yeah, we're uh, ba I'm basing all this crap off of pictures here, that little switch you see there. I had no clue where that was supposed to go because yeah, there was no pictures of where it's supposed to be mounted properly. So I just had to kind of guess based on like some other relative pictures of really small details of it. Uh, yeah, it's quite a pain trying to figure that out. It took me at least like 10 minutes or so just to, for that little part alone. So yeah, it's very time consuming. Fortunately, I sped it up and yeah, like I said, it would have been a real piece to record it but you know there we go so we've got our little axles we're putting those in uh, just for the sliding wheels just m5 bolts pretty simple or screws I guess and then I print off some little like seven millimeter shims that aren't quite seven millimeters due to uh, calibration discrepancies but they are close enough to work so I, uh, I'll take it so yeah we got our little wheels here they're just like a couple little uh, bearings with some wheels and things like a little spacer or a washer I printed out. So yeah, that's pretty cool because yeah, if you need like a little bit of hardware, you can actually print out little washers and spacers like that. It's pretty easy to do. And they're pretty easy to code as well in like CAD, especially open S CAD. So there we go, get it all put together. Now I had to uh, put the nuts on and get them tensioned correctly, which that was a bit of a chore, but did uh Get that taken care of there. Another thing I did want to kind of point out that it's kind of, I don't know why I'm so infatuated with this, but this is like one of the first things I wanted to do when I got a 3D printer was print out another printer. I mean, I can understand, um, I mean, I guess it kind of started when uh, I had my printer bought, which was a very terrible printer, required, like I said, made out of wood, required a lot of uh, babysitting and yeah, just general upkeep and maintenance each time you decided to print with very limited success rate in terms of uh, successful prints. There we go, got a little test fitament. Um, yeah, apparently I ordered the wrong screws for the GT2 belt clamps, which are of course right intersecting with that uh, rail there. So I went ahead and swapped those out after the video aired once I ordered some on Amazon. They're at 12s and I was like yeah maybe I can skirt along with these but yeah definitely need 10 millimeter ones but yeah got those fortunately all the stuff's relatively cheap at least the hardware is all the electronics and I not so much but yeah I didn't spend a whole lot on this printer here but uh, maybe about five six hundred bucks tops overall material or stuff spent that I didn't really have already maybe a little bit less than that but uh 
yeah back to what i was saying about the uh, printer here yeah, i don't know i guess it was just i was trying to print out a better printer of course with the printer bot being so terrible i never really was able to successfully do it while owning that printer so i had to get that flash forge which yeah that's pretty awesome printer i mean if i only wanted one that'd be and just something relatively simple to set up and didn't need a whole lot of you know prep to get it functioning properly that'd be a printer i'd recommend uh that's you know under fifteen hundred dollars is there about twelve hundred right now there we go got it nice and slided here just love the uh love the movement now the thing i will know is there's not a lot of backlash uh between the actual movement of any of the axes on this gantry rail which is really awesome because yeah normally with um, other types of especially if you're using like eight millimeter rods to move along the actual axis there can be unless if you're using like two or more rods and like three or four bearings you're not going to get you're going to get a little bit of um yeah just a little, little wobble between the other axes there but uh um, yeah, definitely none of that exhibiting through here. It just took a little bit of time to get everything adjusted properly in terms of tension. The wheels were binding up a little bit. At least one of them was. Hopefully, I can get that fixed. I don't have to get a return because I think I ordered just enough wheels for this project, if I'm not mistaken. Because they were like, they're pretty expensive. I think they're like a buck a piece or something ridiculous like that for a tiny little rubber piece. But yeah, once I got everything tensioned here correctly, it all came together pretty good. And yeah, there's, like I said, little to no backlash. So this is going to be a pretty accurate print. I'm pretty excited. I cannot wait to embark and start uh, getting the rest of it assembled here. Still have to uh, machine out the bed, which I might, I'm probably, I'll film a little blurb on that. It's a pretty simple little procedure. Just got to go rock back to the office, get that drilled out machined. But yeah, there we go, folks. Thanks for watching here. And hey, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe. And hey, uh, check out my new 3dshapeengineering.com website. I'm going to put another link at the annotation here. And like I said, link in the description. And hey, folks, check out my other videos. Take it easy.